Hello Internet, I'm Jackie Fox, and tonight we're going to be talking about modern monetary theory. This is something that I did a one hour video lecture on from my car. I got to admit, I'm probably going to have to redo the entire thing because audio quality wasn't great and just imagine my camera like floating around my dashboard as I did it. But I think that modern monetary theory is something that we really need to understand if we're going to be making informed decisions about who to vote for from a monetary perspective. And this is because our standard understanding of economics and the way that it's fed to us in the media is pretty bad. That being said, this isn't going to be an hour long lecture. I just want to cover the very basics of modern monetary theory. So the first thing to understand is that for a country like the United States, which has a sovereign currency, which means that we completely control it, we can print as much of it as we want at any time to pay our debts or for any programs that we need to pay for, and also countries that have a fiat currency in addition to that. So we couldn't do this if we still had a gold-backed currency, for example. We would basically devalue the connection of gold to the, the currency. Um, we could basically print our way out of debt. First big groundbreaking thing to understand. We can make those money printers go burr 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 all day long with certain constraints that I'll get into in just a minute. The second thing that you need to understand and the quickest way to piss off someone who understands modern monetary theory is to look at a policy and say, but how are you going to pay for it? We only bring in so much in taxes. Here's the thing though. Your taxes don't pay for anything. Taxes exist as a way to pull money out of the economy. Every year, the government spending increases the amount of money that are, that's in the economy. And then taxes pull that back out at the end of the year. So when you're talking about a government having a surplus or a deficit, it basically means which are they doing more of, spending or taxing? It, doesn't really mean that you have to have a certain level of taxes to pay for a certain level of spending. It's also not necessarily the case that we're like getting massive loans from China. I mean, Donald Trump kind of won on this rhetoric, at least in some parts. So I'm very happy to debunk it because it's bull. And actually, I really feel like he understands that it's bull now. He, he keeps kind of saying these sort of things, but I, I get the feeling from a lot of the things that he does that he understands modern monetary theory more than some other politicians do. And this is just a theory. It's not necessarily good or bad, but it's good for you to understand it because it seems to be the best description of the way things work. So when you're thinking about a deficit and a surplus, you need to be thinking about it like this. When the government runs a deficit, it means that taxes are lower than spending. It increases the national debt, which isn't nearly as big a thing as people like to imagine it is. And I'll get into that in a little bit more in a second. But basically, when the government runs a deficit, it means it's putting more money into our economy than it's taking out. It means that collectively, as America, we have more money to spend. Now whether or not that money makes it to the lower class, whether it actually benefits us instead of the titans of industry and tro future trillionaires like Jeff Bezos. Don't want to give him credit for that yet. Um, I really hope we, uh, we fix that before he gets there. But, you know, it does mean that there is more money in general in our economy, which means our GDP can go up, which means that we can collect more in taxes in the next year. As long as we don't cut taxes, you know, within that year. Um, when we run a surplus, you know, typically we think of this as good. Like, Bill Clinton gets a lot of credit for running a surplus throughout his presidency. But it was actually pretty damaging that he did that to our economy. I mean, first of all, he was pulling money out of the economy rather rapidly. Now, we were in the middle of a dot-com boom, which meant that the, uh, the stock market was going up. But the thing you got to realize is that the stock market is based on speculation. It's based on this idea of like how much people think a company will be worth. It's based on what they think, not the amount of money that they have, not on their level of profit. There are many companies that are valued very highly, like Twitter was for a long time, even though Twitter had no way of making profit at the time. I mean, there's a lot of companies, even now, especially in the tech sector, that do not profit. 
but have huge valuations on the stock market. So, you know, the fact that the stock market was going up didn't mean that there was more money in the economy. And that ended up being a bubble that burst and really damaged our economy in a bit of a recession. All of that being said, uh, there's another problem with that in that when the government goes into debt, when it runs a deficit, it sells something called treasury bills, which are the most solid form of investment. I mean, a lot of people's retirements are built on treasury bills because when you have a government that can print its own money and you buy its debt, you know it's going to pay you back. It, it can just print the money to do so. So it's the safest investment you can possibly make. And the fact that we weren't printing treasury bills for like a good eight year period was actually really detrimental to the the safety of the investment market. And a lot of really uh, less good companies stepped in to make loans at high interest rates um, to kind of cover that, that difference. And it was not a good scene. So the other misunderstanding that we typically have that modern monetary theory would say is false is this idea that national debt and large deficits necessarily lead to inflation. Modern monetary theory takes a different look at this. It says that because we can print money, because we can always pay off our debt, as long as we have the resources to pay foreign uh, companies that we might owe money to or need to buy things from, we'll be fine. It's not really going to increase inflation that much. So basically, as long as we still have the national resources, as long as all the things that the government are being, are, is paying for can be done within the country, there's not a huge risk, risk of inflation, which takes us to an idea like Medicare for all. I mean, we're not paying for people to go out of country and get medical care, so we're not going to owe money to other countries. Everything's going to be paid for within our own currency. So we can print as much money as we need to to pay Americans hospital bills at any time. And that's not really going to run that big of a risk of causing inflation, even if it does add a lot to our deficit. It really matters how you spend the money a lot more than how much money you spend. So that's basically a primer on mon modern monetary theory. If you still have some questions or if some of this seems a little bit out there to you, because it, it poof, that's what my mind did when I first learned about this stuff. And I was pretty skeptical at first too, but the more I began to understand it, the more it made sense. And if you have any questions, since I'm trying to keep this video short, drop them down there in those comments. We can have a discussion about it. I would be happy to clarify. And if it goes over my head, I know people who are like my MMT senpais that I can bring in to help answer those questions for you or find answers for you. But it really changes the way that we understand government level economics. And once you realize how it works, you can start to understand who gets this and who doesn't. And if there's one person who definitely doesn't get this, or at least um, acts as though he doesn't get it, he might, it's Joe Biden. I mean, he's always saying, like, how are we going to make Social Security sustainable? We have to cut it. We have to cut it so that it'll last. It's not true. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> as And, you know, the, the chairman of the Fed actually said this at one point to Paul Ryan when he said something very similar, because... On this issue, they're a lot alike, Paul Ryan and Joe Biden. But he said, you know, as long as we can still make the products that our retiring seniors are paying for with their social security, we could spend and print as much money as we wanted on social security to allow them to buy those things. Again, it matters more how you spend the money than how much money you spend. And I understand that this sounds a little bit strange, but just imagine, you know, the big difference between your household budget and the government budget is the fact that the government is legally capable of printing its own money. And when you or I do that, it's uh, highly legally frowned upon, to say the least. So I hope this helped you understand uh, some basic economic concepts a little bit better. And I hope that it kind of changes the way that you look at politicians and their proposals here in the future. So thanks for tuning in, and I hope I see you next time. Bye.
I'm Jackie Fox and my content will always be ad free because I'm eschewing corporate donations to the channel. I just ask that if you can donate a little bit of money on Patreon like these fine foxy folks, or if you want to make a one time donation, you can donate on coffee. If you're looking for another way to support the channel, I'm also making fox hats with my logo on them. They are currently in the design phase and I'm willing to allow people to ask for customized hats. Prices may vary depending on the cost of labor to manufacture them because I want to make sure that my workers are paid fairly. But I am happy to say that the next few months, if you're a patron who has donated to this channel, I will be counting all of your donations against the cost of your first fox hat, allowing you to get it at a discount.